Hey everyone, this weekend in America is the next round of the democratic selection process, and at the time of recording I can't tell who's going to win because predicting the future is not a superpower that I possess. If I could possess any superpower though, that would probably be the Roman Empire in the second century. Let's take a quick look at the main candidates though. Number one, Joe Biden. He's the candidate that the establishment are hoping gets the nomination. He's Obama's old vice president, has decades of experience, he's saltier than a tourist swimming in the Dead Sea, and he's polling miles behind because clearly nobody learned anything from 2016. But on the other hand, he is an old white man with numerous accusations of lewd impropriety, which makes him an excellent match for President Trump. Number two, Bernie Sanders. He's now the front runner, very left wing, a US version of Jeremy Corbyn. He plays well to his base, but then so does Piers Morgan. It doesn't mean he's popular with the general public, and even a lot of unions have failed to endorse him. More worryingly, it's his age. He's five years older than George W. Bush, and he ran for office 20 years ago. So keep a fire extinguisher handy, because if Bernie mysteriously dies in his sleep, I'm sure the internet will probably catch fire. Number three, Michael Bloomberg. The billionaire has so far done pretty dreadfully, but he has spent nearly half a billion dollars of his own money on this, and he has got the support of Hillary Clinton, which is more important than you'd think, so he could very well buy the nomination. He's got an emerging litany of offensive quotes and faced attacks on the grounds of racism and sexism and pretty much everything there is. But as I said, he does have a lot of money and he is really good friends with the Clintons. If you've ever seen a tailor or a seamstress stitching something up, you've probably got a very good idea where this race is heading. Number four, Pete Buttigieg, a small town mayor from Indiana whose real only claim to fame in this is being less awful than the past three. He's comically out of his depth right now, but will likely be the vice presidential nomination, partly because he can lend his endorsement to someone else, and partly because strangely he's yet another candidate with a letter B initial in his name. And in the superficial branding based world in which we live, that alliteration is worth far more, frankly, than it should be. Number five, Elizabeth Warren, the female candidate who could have probably won last time around. It's probably a bit over the hill now. She's also the only ethnic minority candidate in this race right now, being one-tenth of one percent Native American. After a DNA test spectacularly backfired and destroyed her backstory, I've frankly not seen a backstory destroyed that badly since the Star Wars prequels. So anyway, those are your five. One of whom might become president or may lose in hilariously embarrassing fashion. Personally speaking, my favourite US president was William Harry Harrison, because after taking office he got sick, died almost immediately, and therefore introduced no new laws whatsoever. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.